you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. It's 4 a.m. I took you home. Drunk as hell and I want a bone. Shirt off, bra off, what you gonna do? Better move quick before I puke. If you can't perform, I'll go back to the club. Don't waste my time when I wanna fuck. Screw me at night and screw me in the morning. I'm a sex addict like me, so horny. Pick me up and put me down. Show up in the world and it's all around. That's my belly button, genius. 51 seconds of logos! And now that we have the backstory why CinemaSense thinks logos are bad, this one's a bit egregious, considering this movie definitely wasn't playing as much as The Dark Knight on its opening night. Nothing like opening up your goofy and comedic action movie with a child on the verge of dying. Between this and Thor Love and Thunder, the summer of 2022 really could have used some lessons on how to use the juxtaposition of tone correctly. We're going to get to that video next, but let's deal with this one first. I'm going to start with You Don't Know Why Tonal Shifts Exist. As I told you in the second to last video, a tonal shift is meant to evoke a particular emotion out of the audience. Delving further into this concept, different characters can have different tones attached to their characterization. In this scene, we see this character is not having a happy-go-lucky life. Simply because one character is experiencing something does not mean the entire film has to, too. We're aware the film is a comedy. That is not precluded from having serious moments, you fuddy-dud. The boom slang also became a news position, so we will know what it is when it shows up later in the movie cliche. Right, because otherwise you'd be all, This came out of nowhere. Why wasn't this explained to us earlier? I hate when movies expect me to just know things. I'm pretty sure this translates to good luck reading this. I'm not entirely sure they wanted you to read it, but it basically repeats the same phrases over and over with a few new ones mixed in every cycle. On the other hand, who the hell cares? You would think since they took the time to show you this lost ticket and locker key, both of these missing items would cause an issue later on, but they don't. He picks the lock and shows the train attendant the receipt for his ticket. So why is this shot? That's a hilarious lie. The loss of the train ticket is why the conductor asked him to get off the train later, which became an obstacle when he was forced back on the train by the wolf. I'm still in for Carver. You, you picked me second to Carver? I swear this movie is 5% people saying the name Carver. Which of course is the reason the joke pays off so well at the end. Think about it. If they didn't penetrate your psyche with this name, the reveal who Carver is wouldn't hit as hard. This wire will be a continuity error later in the movie, but I am working to grow beyond this kind of nitpicking. That's a lie, I'm doing no such thing. Instead, I'm giving it a sin now, and I'll give it another sin later. Pointing out that you double sin does not absolve you of double sinning, and is also my job. Hero from Heroes is neither a hero nor a hero in this scene. Everything wrong with Bullet Train, ladies and gentlemen. An actor is not who he was acting as in another property. The bullet train has 16 cars, 10 economy, 6 first class, and remember, only one minute stop at every station. For the record, the bullet train in real life does stop for more than one minute each time. Train assistants have to be able to get cars in order for the new passengers, and passengers are allowed to get off and buy food or whatever they would like at each of the train stations. These one minute time limits at each stop are all the bullshit. That is hilariously wrong. As a person that has actually ridden the bullet train from Yokohama to Kyoto and back, which I put in a vlog that you can watch here, I'll pause so you can get the link. I can tell you that you are entirely unable to get off and buy food and still make it back to the train. That's not even possible on the regular trains in Japan, which I also have extensive experience riding. Okay, simple snatch and grab. What am I snatching and or grabbing? Discussing your heist plan openly on the train where the people you are stealing from could easily be within earshot makes about as much sense as pretty much anything that happened in ambulance. It's almost like he's in Japan, a country where nearly no one can understand English and practically run away from you when you try. The real sin is that there are this many English speakers on this train. I mean, look at this cast. Brit, American, American, American playing a Brit, Brit, and he's half white, American with a Brit's accent who's also playing a Russian, American, this old ass lady, list goes on. There are not this many Gai Kokujin in one place in Tokyo, trust me on this. Hell, the only Japanese Japanese person they have is Hiroyuki Sanada, or that one dude you call 
call when you need an Asian actor, like John Wick, Mortal Kombat, Endgame, The Wolverine, and Army of the Dead. What I'm saying is, you can tell this movie was made by Americans. Lemonade, lemon drops. You got a sore throat. Lemon meringue pie. When was the last time you ate a lemon meringue pie? He's to banter on about lemons for all the British amounts of the English language sometime, because Americans love the accent. No joke, the last time I was riding in the tube in London, there was an advert for Las Vegas. Skip! Uh, you watch something nowadays, what is it, huh? Nothingness. Twists, violence, drama, no message. What's the point, huh? Is the movie making the argument for me to stop watching the movie? Because it feels like the movie is making the argument for me to stop watching the movie. Or to get you to start watching Thomas the Tank Engine? Everything I learned about people, I learned from Thomas. Some people are diesels. Check off strain sticker. Fantastic. You can point out narrative devices. You want a cookie so that you can finish explaining why not violating Chekhov's gun is a sin for movies? We're 17, goddammit. I want to f***ing strangle you. Do you mind if we do this right now? These two arguing over body counts, as if that will make us more interested in non-sequential storytelling or the flashbackion sequence we're about to watch. I get the whole we're assholes scheme. Really, I do. I mean, I've been doing it to you guys for five years now. But you're not about to tell me you honestly believe people didn't like this moment in this film. Are you that out of touch that you thought people didn't like this movie? Fam, this video has a million views, a metric you are barely able to crack these days, so that should tell you something. How about a wagon wheel? Strange request, but okay. So rock me my- Jeremy sings in a video cliche. He's not a monster, he didn't make it sit through it five times, he just cut once, didn't he? Obviously the act of cutting the fingers off, no matter how he did it, still makes the white death a monster, but more importantly, how did he cut five fingers off at once without taking most of the hand as well? I mean, I don't want to see it. Oh, kind of do, but I really don't. Or well, kind of do. This is what happens when you're a pedantic little know-it-all. You are literally talking over the scene in which they stated the White Death cut off her arm instead of cutting off her fingers. That's explicitly in reference to what you mentioned when you said he would be a monster for taking off her fingers anyway. By the end of this movie, we're all going to realize how much of a coincidence is chance in a fate salad it was for the wolf and ladybug to be here in the same place at the same time. But the writers should know that creating this plot ex machina of a universe won't prevent it from being sinned. Another insanely egregious misuse of the phrase deus ex machina. And so what? So f***ing what if a story creates moments where things happen? That's what a story is, a made-up situation filled with things that happen to further that story. You mean to tell me your book doesn't contain a coincidence? Has no deus ex machinas? Has zero cliches of any kind? Dude, you wrote a story about disabled superheroes. By definition, that's bullshit. My parents call me Melinke Prince. That means little prince. Obviously, they wanted a boy. Except we'll find out later she is the White Death's daughter and therefore the son's sister. So that means her parents did have a boy. And what she really means is that her parents didn't want a daughter. Therefore, this line of dialogue is to throw us off of a twist that happens later that we couldn't give two shits about. Yay. Did it not once cross your tiny little mind that she's the elder sibling? <laughs> First off, the prince had no clue when Kimura would wake up, so there's no way she could have timed this call as perfectly as she did. Second, he would have shot her instead of letting her answer the phone. Third, that gun is rigged to blow up in the shooter's face, so if he did fire the gun, Kimura would be dead and not able to carry out the prince's plan. Suffice to say, everything about this scene might look cool on the page, but it plays out like shit on the stage. You're forgetting that they're on a moving train in Japan. Kimura had no intention of firing that gun in that moment, only to take it from her and threaten her with it. The scene doesn't even show him aim the gun at her until way after she picks up the phone. You just manipulate the audience into thinking he does. Why do I even bother forwarding you the briefings? Because how else would we have multiple scenes of various characters feeding us exposition and showing us an array of flashbacks that serve very little purpose other than to unimaginatively force feed us narrative and pad the runtime? This movie is essentially Smoking Aces, and Smoking Aces had a 20 minute shorter runtime. Be more like Smoking Aces, which is a sentence I never once thought I would utter in my post Smoking Aces lifetime. <sighs> The Japanese underworld used to be ruled by a man named Minigishi. You know you've gone too far with your flashback position when Aaron Taylor Johnson seems more upset about delivering it than your audience is about hearing it. This is one of those videos where CinemaSins has mistakenly assumed his audience, and public at large, dislike the film. You can tell very easily these days because they try to play to the crowd instead of having a shred of integrity and telling us what they thought of a film. This is why he removed a sin for the Chadwick Boseman Marvel logo with zero caveats, but didn't do the same for Stan Lee's version of the same exact thing. By God, this sequence couldn't be ripping off Kill Bill more if someone had actually said, hey, we should go Kill Bill now. So, Kill Bill invented Japan, the Yakuza, and the Yakuza wearing suits now? Damn, I guess Japan forgot to give Kill Bill credit for their whole swag, yo. 
drunk driving accident or some sh**. There's drunk driving and then they're soaking the whole vehicle in Bacardi 151. And I know that the real story behind this is much more sinister and much less accident. And let me stop you right there because you are aware this isn't a drunk driving incident, but you still wanted to get your lame alcohol joke off. You're forgetting what you just said about this movie with the smoking aces comparison. This film is stylish on purpose. Frankly, we don't really know if the car actually went up in a fireball like this. That could easily be story embellishment by a character that wasn't there. But I'm not in someone else's story. You're all in mine. The f does that have to do with me? Kimura would have a cheeky nickname like all the other characters at CinemaSense. That you just admitted you don't understand, you're all in my story, is a hilarious bit of irony. I mean, thinking Kimura had a point there with that question is f***ing LOL. You still got that vest on, yeah? Oh no, let's give you a false sense of security. Except for this one, which you're using to give the viewer a false sense of insecurity while simultaneously confusing them with a lie that comes out of nowhere and seemingly has no motivation. Subversion is a movie sin now. And I like how you said it has no motivation. Busting his brother's balls is the motivation. They've been doing that for the past 25 minutes. Where the hell have you been? I guess when Lemon said he doesn't bleed, you also took that serious? Oh, oh shit, man. Who the fuck did I kill? Get a wet one on it or something. Oh, it's not my mate. Oh, it's not yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't bleed. Oh, this is obvious characterization. Lemon takes Tangerine's advice to heart, but he doesn't like to admit when he's right. All right, I'll admit that I've never exchanged briefcases in the middle of a desert. But whether or not this is an established protocol for criminal activity, parking your cars like this looks both foolish and like a huge time suck. I'm struggling to see the benefit outside of creating a good composition for the cinematographer. And if it turns out that this is what cartels actually do, they should know that I support them, both emotionally and intellectually. And when they hear that ding that signifies a sin, they'll know you were lying and turn you into soup that Walter White will be forced to get rid of. No! What is this, the highest coat pocket ever designed? Seriously, his phone had to be up by his shoulder for this to work. Well, to be entirely fair, it is a big ass phone. This entire fight sequence, which ends in a murder, is allowed to go on and interrupt it. No random passengers or workers walk through, and none of the cameras on the train pick this up. Someone would absolutely see this, and the train would be stopped immediately to have its cavities searched. This isn't really true on a Shinkansen. For one, Japanese people most definitely remain seated while this thing is taking off. Like I said, I've ridden this train multiple times, and believe me, no one is wandering from car to car. These vehicles are also very, very long, so while a worker might walk through the cars, again, I didn't see any outside of the snack cart, it's feasible this fight could take place before or after they got there. Also, not all Shinkansen have cameras in the cars that watch the passengers, and legislation was only recently passed mandating cameras be placed in them. I mean, look at the date of this article. While Japan is definitely more advanced than us in a lot of areas, they are behind in a lot of them as well. Also to the third, movie will spend three minutes and seven seconds on a flashback developing the character of Wolf and then will kill off this character in the present two minutes and seven seconds later. Movie spends one minute longer setting up a character than it chose to let him live. What the fuck is the point of all these flashbacks? Are you being serious? <laughs> I really can't tell. The wolf flashback isn't setting up the wolf, it's for establishing why Ladybug is on this train. That's the point of Wolf's sudden death, comedically showing he wasn't really an important part of the story, a subversion of these kinds of movies building up important characters with flashbacks. It's Misdirection 101. They teach you this at Magician Tech. Ladybug is super concerned about his fingerprints being on the knife, but he has no issue with the fingerprints he got on the bottle, the trash can, and pretty much everything else in the room. This planning is illogical, hypocritical, and theatrical. At least, that's what I think will go. And now Jeremy is lying to us once again. Ladybug isn't trying to clean off the fingerprints. He's tidying up the car because of the glass they broke, and he's removing the knife from the wolf's corazon so that he can set him up to appear as if he's sleeping. There isn't a scene of him cleaning off any fingerprints. You just made that up. What the f*** is in my mama? Better question, who the f*** is watching at 9 a.m. on a Thursday. Hikikomori? Neats? Children that don't want to go to school because they're being bullied and found a mirror that transports them to a castle where they meet a little girl wearing a wolf mask? Ladybug stops in his tracks because he sees a gun. I'm on board with that. But then we get a mini flashback because the same guy who couldn't remember the front of the wolf's face can all of a sudden identify Lemon from one glance at the back of his head. Are we really pretending Paperboy's hair isn't incredibly distinctive and the fact he's a black dude in Japan? Do you know how rare that is outside of Rapungi and Kabuki Cho? <laughs> Everything about that punch is hilarious. But deep down inside, mascots are people too. Jeremy sends something he laughs at, cliche. I missed my stop. Why? A contrived plot scenario designed to keep the protagonist, who's not even supposed to be here today, on the train. Was I close? To yelling at the screen? Yeah, you were. The twins? Yeah, I'm not so sure they're twins. Stop it. Everyone knows they're twins. And this is supposed to be funny because of race? Ah, f movie. You missed another opportunity for an informative flashback about this joke. 
or you missed the joke, which is that nobody knows what they actually look like, which is weird, considering they quite literally spell that out when Ladybug pretends to be Tangerine's brother in a later scene. Hello. The White Death would like to know why you stepped off the train. Maybe Tangerine stepped off the train, maybe he didn't. The movie certainly didn't show us, but we did see Lemon stepping off the train. So maybe this guy thinks that Tangerine is Lemon, or that Lemon is Tangerine. Hell, maybe he thinks that Lemon is Lime. The point is that Grant Hill drinks Sprite. The movie's dialogue is confusing, and I'm tired of talking about citrus fruit. All this bullshit. This lady is more concerned with Lemon and Ladybug being quiet than she is about the obvious gun. She would be able to see sticking out of Lemon's pants. Dude, this is a train in Japan. She's more likely to assume that's a vibrator than a gun. Movie wants me to believe that passengers sat in this train car for any amount of time without suffering permanent injury from prolonged exposure to this lighting. What? I literally stream in that lighting. And I, 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 I turned out okay. Oh God, I can't talk to Eat a bag of dicks, lady. If Ladybug cared so little about this woman hearing him that he would ask her to eat a bag of dicks, then why go through with the I'm just typing on my laptop ruse? But you're speaking over Ladybug apologizing in that the insult slipped out, which means he did care about her hearing him. This video is awful. You're just making shit up without even caring what you're saying. A lot of phones do allow facial recognition when said owner's eyes are closed, and that is some bullshit. And that would be a sin for those phones and not this movie for simply reflecting reality. Whoa, whoa, it, um, is, is this the sex stuff? It's amazing to me that in 2022, movies are still trying to pull off these, oh, see, it's funny because he thinks it's a gay thing jokes. But here we are. And it's amazing to me that you try to current year us when this joke isn't making fun of gay people, but including them in on the joke, treating him like a regular person. Your dumbass just saw a gay person and assumed he was the butt of a joke instead of being the catalyst for one. And even if he were, so what? If I could just step on a soapbox for a second, let me explain something to you people that think you can't be made fun of. You can. I am so sick of Christians, disabled people, SJWs, motherfuckers on the right, the left, and all you other sensitive little bitches thinking that you are the only people that can't be a part of a joke. That's not how equality works. I could completely understand if the joke was, ew, gay dude, but in this case it was, haha, sexual misunderstanding, and the joke would have remained exactly the same if it were a sexually liberal woman. You cannot claim to want equality and at the same time laugh at everyone else, but try to exempt yourselves when shit gets uncomfortable. That's called privilege. There's another body here. Let the bodies hit the train. Let the bodies hit the train. Jeremy sings in a video cliche. I wonder how he'll do it. Maybe a pillow to the face. Well, the kid is hooked up to a ventilator, so the pillow on the face wouldn't really do much of anything. It's almost like she doesn't know that. Bring the white death to the man who killed his son. Yeah, but Gloucester didn't do it. I can give a rat's ass. I'm telling you, I read him, he's not the type, mate. And why do you know this now as opposed to earlier when you were absolutely certain he was a diesel? Probably because he didn't kill Lemon, even though Lemon obviously was trying to kill him. Are you unaware the context of this conversation is about whether Ladybug is a killer? Hello? If the assumption is that he killed the White Death's son, why would he leave Lemon alive? Do you ever use your brain, or is it an antique piece that no one's allowed to touch? Littering the cigarette that you only lit 10 slow motion seconds ago. Well, the sign does say no smoking. Seven more minutes, and I'm off this train. Wait a sloppy second. Why are you still on the train? Last we saw, you had just evaded Tangerine, and the train was about to stop, so ATJ could do a sexy strut. Why didn't you hop off when everyone was clearly distracted? Because he didn't have the case, you know, his mission objective. This is the point at which he stopped caring about the case, which you conveniently failed to mention. Oh, okay, maybe it's important. What? He's answering the phone? Now? Jeremy is making it seem as if it was not made abundantly clear to Tangerine that if he didn't check in, he and his brother would be killed at the subsequent stop. That was the literal point of the scene where he got off the train, something Jeremy mentioned at least three times. The way this is to get off at next stop, holding the briefcase. Now I feel the need to go back to what we'll find out later, which is that the White Death had intended for his son and all these assassins to die. So why does he need them to get off the train right now to show the briefcase? Makes sense from a current standpoint, because we believe he's expecting to see his son and get the money at the last stop. But since he's well aware his son should be dead, this change in plans where people could escape, get wise to him, etc. makes zero sense. But that's not really true, is it? The White Death did hire the Hornet to kill his son, but at this point he's been made aware something has gone wrong on the train, and that, at least to his knowledge, his son is still alive at this point. We know the Hornet has accomplished her mission, but since Tangerine and Lemon fooled the Yakuza at the first stop, the White Death is making sure his son is still on the street train so she can finish the job. It makes all the sense. Lemon shoots Kimura despite his uncanny ability to read people. 
Sure, this could be the movie's way of saying that Lemon actually sucks at reading people, but if that were the case, I would expect some kind of acknowledgement by the end. And that certainly never happens. Let's be clear here. Kimura is a bad guy. He works for the Yakuza and intended to kill the person responsible for his son's hospitalization. It could be said that he correctly read that he's a bad person overall. He also correctly identifies that Prince is shady twice, only she fooled him in this particular moment. You had Zazzy Beats in your movie and you waited one hour and ten minutes to let us see her? What the f***? bullet train. This movie shows Michael Shannon even later in the film, and he's a far more accomplished actor than her. Like, what the heck has she done to elicit this response? You stole my snake, bitch. Hey, bitch. Weak ass, bitch. The hornet stings, bitch. You've seen my face, bitch. What do you think, bitch? Seen bitches on for all the derogatory references for a human but not a dog amounts of the English language not making sense. Quite frankly, no one uses that word for a female dog anymore. It's like phobia. People use it to mean something completely different than what the dictionary says. One little prick from this, you know what happens. Yes. Your blood congeals, clogging your veins. You bleed on your I said stomach. yes! Making Ladybug good at Cinema Sins doesn't absolve you for exposplaining the effects of the snake venom for what feels like the hundredth time. But that's exactly the purpose of the scene. Her over-explaining something a character in the movie acknowledges he already knows is the joke. How is it this hard to understand Bullet Train? Why does the Hornet not think Ladybug is going to try to steal the anti-venom as soon as she tries to take it out? This might be a horrible way to die, but it's also a stupid way to die if all you had to do was turn your back to prevent him from immediately stealing it from you. Oh my god, dude. They show her calculating whether to pull it out in front of him in the scene you're talking over. That's why Ladybug was waiting for her to make a move, and she didn't immediately. Turning her back gives Ladybug a vulnerable position where he could prevent her from sticking herself, and she has literal seconds before she dies. Did this guy casually clean up the blood as well, with no questions asked? Maybe he did. We don't know. You're presenting this as if the bottle was near the blood when you're showing evidence the bottle was kicked to the other side, meaning he hasn't reached this area yet. I could journal. I should journal. This movie doesn't seem to know if it wants to paint a positive picture of what therapy can do for someone as lost as Ladybug, or if it just wants to treat therapy for anxiety and depression as if it's comedy gold, and it's honestly starting to piss me off. Who gives a shit? Diesel. The absolute fucking worst. Whoa, man, I know everyone's got an opinion about the Fast franchise, but he was great as Groot, right? I've pointed this out before, but this is one of those lame nothing sins Cinema Sins has to include for context for the following scene. It's a nothing burger that he could have skipped, especially because he always cuts out context. Seriously, if you laughed at this, you probably also find knock-knock jokes hysterical. I'm scared! I don't want to be alone! Movie seems to believe that Ladybug is the protagonist, but he's killed almost all of the cooler characters and now falls for this bullshit. So outside of his good looks, why are we rooting for this guy? Up to this point, Ladybug has killed one character, the Hornet. And like every other interaction, it was in self-defense. The Wolf and Tangerine killed themselves. And like I've said many times, a protagonist is not always a good guy. Jules and Vincent are literally hitmen that brutally murdered Jerry Seinfeld. Dom Cobb lies to people while they're dreaming and steals from them. Adelaide Thomas took the place of the real Adelaide, subjecting her to horrors beyond imagination. A protagonist simply means the main character. It does not mean they are morally good and that we should be rooting for them. It's raining and everything is on fire because wet hot drama! Is this an assumption that rain automatically extinguishes fire? Because... Um... Yeah. We prepare together while we die alone. Classic team up. Classic. But see, this is one of those bullshit seeing that coming sins that nobody believes you actually saw coming. Seriously, up to this point in the film, who seriously thought these guys would form up like Voltron to take on the White Death? You all thought Lemon was dead. Hell, you thought Kimura was too. You might as well tell me you knew Graves was Grindelwald. Ah, uh, <laughs> Oh shit, everything's in Japanese. Being this shocked that everything is written in Japanese on a Japanese train in Japan. Can you blame him? Up to this point, everybody spoke English. He's like the idiots that watch dubbed anime. In the comment section of a Crunchyroll video, upset that they can't watch the latest Demon Slayer episode because the dub wasn't out yet. Watch it in Japanese, you dingleberries. The man who murdered my wife. And see, it's funny because in David Leitch's film, Deadpool 2, Brad Pitt had a cameo. So now, in his film Bullet Train, Ryan Reynolds has a cameo. See how that all works? Yeah, we see. What? What's the problem? I'm gonna say Ladybug survives this. 
and I challenge you to prove to me that the coffee pot should not have killed him. No problem. We saw this train slow to 30 miles per hour and subsequently crash through a city. Using common sense, we can safely determine the train slowed down significantly from these impacts, but let's stick with 30 miles per hour since the train also went down a hill. Since the object didn't go flying until the train crashed, its momentum is that of the trains, or roughly a starting point of 30 miles per hour. We have seen baseballs, objects significantly denser than this empty kettle, hit baseball players in the face and they can travel in excess of 90 miles per hour. That hits Mitchell. This means if any human has ever survived a fastball, it's not a stretch for Ladybug to have survived this kettle. Movie has the audacity to troll us with a flashback to the story of the fucking water bottle. I think it's hilarious and I love that it's in the movie. But after an hour and 50 minutes of tomfoolery, I'm just not in the mood. Jeremy sends something he likes, but is not in the mood for cliche. In other words, someone's wife. Uh, I think the characterization for the characters needs to come from the books. They need to behave like themselves. That's that's what I think. Um, I'm not saying this is the objective truth, right? I mean, I, I'm sure people have different opinions, uh, but what I think should happen is that the characterization should come from the books. And I think the MCU does that very well for the most part. There is some shit in there that I'd be like, nigga, what the fuck is y'all doing? What y'all thinking? Like Taskmaster, like, come on, dog. <laughs> you had to, you, you put a chip in her head? I'm not even mad that it was a her. I'm mad that that was not Anthony Masters. That's what I'm mad about.